Charlotte Soccer Show. Welcome, everybody, to a brand new episode. I am John Hayes. Danny Brams will join me, as always, in just a minute with our special guest, MLS Next Pro Scout, Ben Green. A fantastic conversation with someone who is doing a job that I think a lot of listeners and fans of soccer would be very interested in hearing about. But first, a really quick update. It's match week. It's a midweek game. Wednesday night, Charlotte FC hosting Toronto at the Fortress. Are we going to protect the keep against the worst team in MLS? We'll find out. It's a massive match. And believe it or not, get ready for this. Charlotte FC's playoff hopes are still alive. Now, yes, they're hanging by a thread. There's no doubt about that. But with four games left remaining on the schedule and one or two games in hand for the Charlotte FC club playing against Chicago, who's ahead of them on the table, playing twice against Inter-Miami, tied with Charlotte FC on the table. A lot of results need to go Charlotte FC's way this week to really have that belief. It's hard to convince anybody right now that Charlotte FC is going to make the playoffs. And for what it's worth, that's not what I'm doing here. I think it's really important. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to save my emotions for for a show later this week after we play Toronto and we potentially go into a massive match against Chicago on Saturday night in the Windy City. I'll save my emotion for then. But for right now, it's about practicality. It's about factuality. It's about understanding the situation that this club is actually in and how this table could potentially play out over the final three weeks of the season. To see what kind of scenarios Charlotte FC needs on Wednesday, I won't list them all here, but you can check us out on X, of course, at For the Crown Baby. And check out our new Instagram page, Charlotte Soccer City on Instagram. You can find us there and check out those scenarios. For now, it's time to celebrate a team that's already clinched their spot in the playoffs that will be hosting a playoff match this weekend in the Queen City. Sunday, October 8th, Crown Legacy hosting a playoff match at 3 p.m. Eastern. Look forward to seeing you there and celebrating what has been a fantastic inaugural season for Crown Legacy. We needed to ask a few questions. How did this roster come together? Where did this talent come from? Well, we found the perfect person to have that kind of conversation with, and we even learned a little bit about him, something we love to do on this show. It's the Charlotte Soccer Show. We appreciate you being here. Stick around and enjoy the interview. Danny, we're here at Atrium Health Performance Park, and we've got a the facility, the facility, the HQ. Uh, we, we've got a special guest uh, here with us today, Ben Green, the MLS Next Pro Scout here uh, for the club, who has, uh, from the looks of it, Danny, done a phenomenal job right. building, helping build this roster, identifying players, uh, crown legacy. Makes the playoffs not only in a in a good position, in a great position, number one seed in the East. So we're here today, Danny, to talk about this club, its roster, how it came together, and uh, talk to a scout who knows these players probably better than anybody. Well, what I wanted to say, and Ben, thank you for joining us, is that the hashtag uh, for Crown Legacy is hashtag build the legacy. We're talking to the man who literally built the legacy. Here, so <laughs> that's a very good thing. Welcome to the show, Ben. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. Uh, happy to be here. Um, Oh, yeah, happy to get into it. Talk about it. it was fun. It was a fun experience being uh, being involved in it, and uh, happy to share any sort of insights that, that I can in, into that whole process. Cool. Well, we I mean a couple things we want to do. We want to get to know you, yeah. your background in the game. Uh, I know I know that you you play the game, and we're going to talk about that, but also talk about the roster build, some of the players that you really like. I want to hear some stories about you know what it's like to be a scout. One thing I was thinking about 
on the drive over here before talking to you was just the idea of the pressure that comes along with you know being a talent evaluate evaluator. So let's just start there. Um, you know, how did you come up through your playing career, uh, decide to get into the scouting business, and kind of have that light bulb go off to say, you know, what I can I've got an eye for talent. Yeah, it's, I, a, it's a it's an interesting story because. I mean, luckily, it's the profession is modernizing a lot to the standpoint of even 10 years ago, if you weren't an ex-pro, the, the chances of getting into this profession is very, very difficult. To be honest, 10 years ago, scouting barely even existed within MLS clubs and the scope of the league as a whole. Um, my journey starts out, I was born and raised in England, um, grew up playing there. What part of England? London. Oh, cool. Northwest London. Sweet. Um, Grew up there. Uh, London actually, is red, baby. Yeah, London, <laughs> London is red. I, I'm an Arsenal fan, so I will, I will, I will That's fine. Put, put it out there. So, it out there. so, so is that. It's fine. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave that for, for, for off air. Well, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll leave that for pints after the yes. Yes. Um, Grew up in England. I grew up, I like, fell in love with a game as a lot of young kids obviously in London do from a really yeah. young age. I like, started playing at three or four. Um, Played at a relatively high level there, trialed and spent time at some of the, the, the professional clubs there coming up. Then I moved to California as a teenager due to some family reasons. Gotcha. Um, then uh, at this point in my mind, I want to play professionally. Like I want to play, uh, but even when I first moved, uh, how MLS this was around a little bit after Beckham had first come to, uh, to Galaxy and the whole progression and of, of MLS and how it was really I think if that was 2.0 or 3.0 but it was one of the point <laughs> one of the point yeah, yeah, one yeah. of the point yeah. yeah um and yeah no I became really kind of just immersed and interested in it uh, I mean I've always been like a football nerd quote unquote like growing up playing I was always deemed to be more of like a cerebral player it was always kind of what I was interested in uh end up playing in college here Still with the mindset of like, okay, I want to, uh, if I can play USL or something, I want to keep on playing as long as I can. My sophomore year, I play in centre midfield against Eric Williamson, um, against U University of Maryland Timbers. And I could not get close to him, was chasing shadows. I was like, this is, he just <laughs> come back, he just yeah. come back from captaining the under 20s at the World Cup. I was okay. like, this is not for me. Yeah. Like, this is the level and I'm so far off it and I'm happy at 19 I come to that realisation yeah, opposed totally. to trying to chase something that was never going to be there for Self me self-awareness is a great trait yeah so um, and at that point I got injured I was like okay I need to figure out I know I want to work in football it was always oh, is it marketing is it media I was like no, I want to be close to the game and then I kind of just honed in on uh, I sacrificed social life and making sure I knew MLS at the back of my hand every Saturday, three or four games. Because I played in college, I had a lot of friends that played in college. I innately was following the college game closely as well. And then that expands and expands. And then you start following global markets. You do it for fun. You do it uh, for free for a lot of time. Yeah. You have to. It's the only way. Social media. I started posting, publishing my work on social media. Um, and then uh, ultimately, like, you have to pay the bills as well so I had to um, I started coaching in college for a little bit then I ended up taking uh, actually a job at the MLS league office in player relations cool. and then I had had a relationship with Thomas and Lissandro prior uh, they'd seen some of my work we'd had conversations and then when this uh, when this opened up when Crown Legacy was uh, coming to the forefront um, they gave me a call and were like, would, would you be interested? And I'd only been at the, I'd been at the league office for only seven months at the time, even. I was like, yeah, like, let's do it. It's always yeah. what I wanted to do. Um, so the chance to do it full time, I couldn't pass up on the opportunity. So packed on my stuff. I'd never been to Charlotte before. Moved here uh, about a year ago now and, and here we are. It's an amazing story. I, it truly is an amazing yeah. story. I have a follow up, which is what's it like to be, you know, young 20s, uh, attractive person comes to you and says, "Hey Ben, you know you want to go out on a date this weekend?" And you, has, I'm sorry, I have to uh, do player notes on Dynamo versus White Cat. You know, you know. Honestly, like, I'm used to it. Like, I've, I've, I've been doing it yeah. by choice. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> for so for so many years, and yeah. like, no, that's why we do what we do because because we love it. Yeah. Like, you don't you don't get into this if you want to clock off at five o'clock on a Friday and you know what? Let me just relax until Monday morning nine o'clock. Like you understand that it's. 365 days a year, 24/7. Like, 
the game is global day. Like there's literally, in what we do, you can always be working. That's not even an over exaggeration with the amount of games and the amount of players that exist in Probably. the world. Yeah. There's always an opportunity to be working in some capacity. So it's about kind of also internally managing that as like, okay, yeah, I can shut off at some point and go to sleep, you know? Yeah. But yeah, yeah. that's just the, just the nature of it. So something you become accustomed to. It, it's turned into a theme on the shows because, you know, it, we, we talked to Jorge Herrera, we talked to Jalen Lindsay recently, and the idea of sacrificing time to reach the level that you want has been a, a constant theme. And it's not sacrificing in a way where it's like, feel bad for me. It's sacrificing in a way that is, if you want to accomplish a goal, you have to put your front foot forward and go get it and, and put that effort in to it and it's all around the club it feels like mm -hmm. there's people here Danny that have, that have made those sacrifices to get to this level yeah I agree and the work didn't stop like as soon as you got here you say uh, you're it, you worked around a lot you worked in the league office you did some did some internships with DC and LA Galaxy and stuff like that so you made a lot of contacts sounds like Thomas was able to bring you here and you guys got started right away right like uh, what was it like to sort of be <laughs> globally yeah. scouting for you know to bring people from all corners of the world to like our little uh corner here in charlotte uh, it's intense to be honest when you start off it's intense and it can be quite overwhelming um mm -hmm. especially like this was the first time that i'd done this professionally full-time i i would say i had scouting experience for maybe five or six years but it was i wasn't doing it for anyone i was doing it for myself mm -hmm. essentially right. um and to be noticed so it's very different when there's okay now i can we were working towards an end product and you're working towards seeing... Like before you were building a resume, now you were building a team. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. I'd yeah. done it on a small, like yeah. when I was uh, working in college, mm -hmm. it was, you do it on a different level. Um, of course, like it's a lot more domestic, there's a bit of international, right. it's, it's, it's the roster build. It's obviously very, very different context. You're playing with 9.9 .9 scholarships opposed to playing with real money uh, and building a squad <laughs> and, a, and a, you know, yeah. a tangible on-field product that hopefully is going to lead somewhere. Um, it's, it's, it's overwhelming, it's intense, but I think the best way is to kind of hit the ground running. Then you get up to speed quickly, you get comfortable, um, and uh, from there it becomes just kind of second nature. It's just you kind of get acclimated to it. You did something which I think was really smart, was I got to build a team from scratch, let's go to Brazil, right? Yes. So, so you yes. went to this young players showcase in Brazil, what was that experience like of having like this ultimate soccer uh, fantasy camp, but not but real life, you know? So, yeah, yeah it was, it's been amazing. I, I've throughout the roster build and following, I've been to Brazil three times. Um, it's uh, the first time. It was it was again. This was only a couple months into the job at this point. And my first scout, I'm getting on a plane going to Sao Paulo. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 I don't speak the language. Obviously, it's a good first move. Um, <laughs> it is. It is. It's very no. It's it's very cool. It, that's where it really like settles in that like, okay, this is my now, my reality is very unique and I'm very grateful for the opportunities. Totally. And then also you go with the mindset of, I oh, need to take advantage of this as well. Like you don't, I think people often externally like to glamorize player recruitment and scouting as kind of, oh, I get to Brazil or this and that. But like it's, these trips are really, really hard work. It's sometimes, you're doing two to three games a day, you're in the car for three or four hours, you get back and you're writing your reports, you're going to sleep at 12, 1 a.m. and then you get up, you do it again the next day for eight, nine days straight, you know, and this is, the, it's great, you love it, but it's, not, it's, it's a lot of work and sometimes it's difficult to even really, it's not like I'm really seeing, I'm seeing a lot of the city and the places um, and the different communities on the road and through the car and through the stadium, some of the stadiums are in, unbelievable locations kind of Sao Paulo the, the great area of Sao Paulo is massive right. um, but it's unique it's really enjoyable but it's 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 really hard work as well and then you have to go in with a mindset of like how can we for the club for what we're trying to build how can we maximize this experience um, as best as possible and then each time you learn you get more comfortable etc etc so so walk us through the process of you're you're there and uh, we're, we're sitting here today on September 27th. You know, what, 
actual results came from that trip. You know, who is on this this squad, this inaugural squad this year, and and who are who are some of the players that you scouted that have you know turned out to be quality performing players. So a lot of it, like there's a lot of different manners which we were able to bring some of the resilience. Like, obviously, we have relationships uh, and a network down there as well. Mm -hmm. Some of it comes from okay, maybe someone's been suggested, and then we look into them more deeply. We like them, we make it happen. For example, in uh, in January, I went to a major youth tournament there, and this was I'd done nine days straight. It was maybe, I think I did twenty three games or something ridiculous. And my final game, the last game, was uh, I was literally going to the airport from the stadium. I saw Tiago in that game, for example. That's another way that it, that's uh, like a tangible. And then from there, the team looks into him. Like it's all a collective effort. It's so like, I'm there on the ground. Then okay, I'm interesting. We send it back to the team. What wise car footage is available? How can we follow up? Do we like them? Then we get multiple reports in and present the player, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and it's all a collective process. Um, whole team involved, and um, that's at the end of the day what makes it worth it. Totally, is it, it's every experience. Whether you take a player from a tournament, or you don't. It's all a learning experience, and it's all you're building your base knowledge of that market. You're building your base knowledge of the players in that market. Uh, building relationships and whether it leads to you signing a player then could lead to you signing a player in six months uh, I see it as all beneficial on a personal level and also for the club and what we're trying to build as well yeah I mean I, I love having uh, just you know as a fan of soccer around the world I love the fact that we have like two tall uh, Brazilian center backs with free kick skills you know that like can hit each other for assists on, <laughs> on direct free kicks and stuff like yeah. that uh, um for set plays and, and whatnot. I think it's great. Uh, I love the idea of both the Jows, uh, Guillermo and Pedro coming up and, and whatnot um, and playing for the first team someday. Uh, it's not just Brazil, though. We also have homegrowns. We have low American homegrowns. We have uh, Petkovic and, and, like, who else? Like, what else, what else besides uh, just that Brazilian tournament uh, informed, like, how you put this team together? Yeah, I mean, I think the balance is super important with a developmental squad and especially with a young team. Um, you can't have 12 Brazilians, you know, you can't, it, there has to be a balance. You have to have, like, when you're going to have, like, Nymphasha, 15, getting mm -hmm. consistent minutes, you can't have, also, start 11, 15-year-olds, and you have to find the right balance between who are some players that can help us um, kind of get off the ground, get help the young players develop, help the international players develop. Um, so that is important for us. College is a huge market for, for that, um, not just for Crown Legacy, for the first team, for, uh, with, uh, it's, a, it's, a fundamental, uh, it's a fundamental market in MLS. Some people like it, some people don't, but uh, the, the reality is it's a, it's a super important building block. So that was obviously um, very, very important. I had a background in college and it was something that I'm uh, passionate about and have deep knowledge in, I feel like. so. We, we felt like that was a good market and like a lot of our staff within the club as well have experience um, with college. So again, a collective, a collective group is able to really hone in and, and focus on that market to really balance out the, okay, we've got our young academy talented players, we have some domestic college players with a high upside that we can build around and then we can also balance it out with some, uh, with some players in international markets and kind of help cohesively join it all together. And even a kid from a local high school here in Charlotte, Jack Neely, right? I mean, gotta love it, right? He's one of our own. Yeah, yeah, there's no doubt about it because these college kids can uh, come from anywhere. I, I just started getting into the college game myself over the last couple months. Yeah. And, you know, my quick takeaway is that there's there's talent out there. There's diamonds in the rough. Just because the team is not good doesn't mean there's not talent on the squad. Yeah. <laughs> you no, know? college is, college is crap. And I was just having this conversation before we walked in here. The level is, the level of international play even that's coming over to take full scholarships at these right. ACC schools is they're probably turning down contracts in fourth or third division of uh, Germany or France, wherever they're coming from, and they'd rather come on a full scholarship to wherever they're wherever they're going to. Like you see the level of facilities, you see the level of play is slowly um, slowly improving each year. Like some of it's always going to be a little bit rough around the edges, but like you said, like there's there's talent everywhere. And in order to build domestic talent, like a lot of it comes from college, yeah, uh, throughout the league, a uh, lot of it comes. Pretty much all of your high-end domestics in MLS, there's a one theme. They they all came, they all played in college at some point. So it's it's a really valuable market. I'm thinking about Ben Bender. I'm thinking about Patrick Ajaman. I'm thinking about Hamadi Diop. Guys that have um, really really made an impact. Uh, 
I, I want to talk about Patrick Ajman. I want to talk about University of Rhode Island, right? Like, h- how does this guy end up at the University of Rhode, Rhode Island and um, when, transferred up to the University yeah, of Rhode Island? That story's amazing. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. Just, it, and again, I, the, the the phrase that comes to my mind is "diamond in the rough," right? As a scout, I mean, uh, how do you how do you start and with the college process, right? Because there's, you know, if you if you go on ESPN Plus and you want to watch NCAA soccer, you literally have like 300 options. Yeah, this is what I do every night before I go to soccer. The whole uh, NCAA, men's NCAA soccer are my ESPN Plus oh, yeah. favorites. <laughs> Absolutely right. Um, no, I mean, it's, a lot of it at that point comes down to a certain intuition. So for me, right, I know, I know the, with the college game, there are certain conferences that might be more international heavy they might be older certain conferences have tend to build their squads more domestically and um, knowing different ways and and how they tend to recruit can make it a little bit easier as well it's always going to be like again you're you're tracking a number of things you have to tap into network you know college coaches who's the best player you played against you know Mm -hmm. stuff like that just trying to get an edge and, and, and honestly a lot of it it just comes down to time at the end of the day like there's I don't know, there's close to 300 Division One programs. You're never gonna see every player, you're never gonna see every team, but the more time you put into it and the more games you're able to watch, the more likely you are to find that diamond in the rough. And it really comes down to, look, do you wanna, with college, do you wanna put in the work? Or there are some clubs that, okay, maybe they'll just go to the combine, see the combine, do a couple works two weeks before, and we'll just uh, we'll pick a random name. I mean, clubs in the past have passed in drafts. They've not, elected to take their third round pick it passed right and like we picked Andrew Privet in yep. the third round this year so for me I always thought that's crazy like look, the worst thing that can happen they come into preseason they're not up to the level maybe you sign them to the second team maybe they got but I think there's 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 always value and it's important to it really is just time get his eyes on as much as possible and we have a, a great team working on it that we're able to see as many games each week as possible and then uh, it makes it easier when we do know who's eligible closer to the time. It's like, okay, we we know 75% of the draft eligible players already. So it's a lot easier for us for them to kind of dictate strategy from that point. I'm glad that you mentioned Privet because I omitted him from my list recklessly considering I am a Penn Stater. Uh, so having Privet on the squad is, is awesome. And knowing that, that that program is being scouted and looked at, I think is 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 really special. Um, I, I, one, one question I have in this regard is, uh, is there a player that you're p- proud of, right? Is, is someone that you're, you're watching this season, whether it's with the next pro squad, a crown legacy, or whether it's the first team up at Charlotte FC, is there somebody when you see them play that you're, that you feel proud of your ability to scout them and kind of what type of player that they've turned into for the club? Again, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say it's me It's right for parents to admit they don't love all their children yeah. here, Ben. It's okay. I, would, yeah. I, I, would, I can't say me as an individual, no, because just knowing, again, how collective the effort was and then the efforts of the club, like, when the players first come in in January right. to yeah. then what you see now, uh, that has nothing to do with us. You know, that's that's the, the work that the coaching staff does to build them up, right. to help them adjust to being pros. They're handing the baton. You're saying, hey. Yeah, no, there's not. Look, I mean, all... But, can you scout for hard work? Can you scout for ability to improve? You can scout for ceiling is the way that I see it. Okay. Um, so, uh, and we try and scout all, every player that we look at, look into, it's not always from a short term lens. It's always what can they become. Mm-hmm. So from, from, from that perspective, it's not like, okay, there's what, uh, this player, I'm, mm-hmm. you know, that makes me feel so good. Like, the fact that even if we signed five players to MLS contracts from college, for example, that's super, super rare. And that, I'm proud of the work that our team did okay. in order to in order to achieve that because that's not that, that that's not a coincidence. You know, we put a lot of time and work into that. Love it. Um, and I think that's a reflection of that. And look, you're not these players aren't getting MLS deals just for the sake of it. You know, it's because they're good enough. It's because they've earned it. Because they deserved it. Mm-hmm. Um, but not one specific player. I think it's too. Yeah. There's too much of a collective effort that goes into it. I don't think I can be individually yeah. proud of anything no, from that a, standpoint. That's yeah. a great answer. And I like yeah. the way that you finish it off there, just the collectiveness, signing all those five college players. It's something to hang your hat on. I think that's good as a staff to be able to say, hey, then we accomplished this together. But but who worked the least? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Who's, who's out of the group project next time? Now, I'm a little bit worried about you, Ben, because this Tiago story is a great story, but 
Now you're going to think, oh, man, it was, I found this guy in the last game right before I went to the airport. Now you're going to be staying up all night just like <laughs> randomly scrolling games on ESPN+. Plus. Your sleep habits are going to take a huge dive. But uh, it paid off. Number one seed, head of the playoffs. Get to pick our opponent. Like, everything has worked out for Crown Lakes. You talked about yeah. the guys making MLS contracts that you're proud of. But how how is your pride factor for the overall effort succeeding? And obviously, you're gonna, I'm sure you're going to credit Jose and all that and the players' work. But, like, you got to feel good that, like, this team is a success and you play a part in that. For sure. Yeah. I mean, and it's always tough. Building anything from scratch is difficult. Like, at any context, any level. Um, so, to be able to build this the way that we did and have the right balance like obviously look the success is great and it has been it's been it's great as part of the development for the team and players at a young age to learn how to win and develop that menta- mentality uh, develop that winning mentality and understand how to win it's important for the development of the players as well but then you know it's it's just as cool from our perspective to see guys that have started in crown legacy and then taken this like you said contributed with the first team in certain moments and you know that that for us is just important as winning games at the at the at the end of the day and um, but I think it's been it's been it's been really enjoyable to see this team grow I think it's a come from seeing the first very first session of preseason to where they've come now it's just like yeah the whole staff done an unbelievable job that kind of molding and maximizing everything uh, or all of the talent that we were able to luckily bring in. Um, and really maximizing their potential and kind of getting the best out of them. It's been yeah, it's been a, it's been a cool journey, and then yeah, hopefully we can we can we can keep it going, keep some of the momentum going into 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 playoffs and see what happens. You never know. So yeah, and and now it feels real. Honestly, just kind of sitting here thinking about it, having this conversation with you about Crown Legacy and MLS Next Pro and. Uh, the, the, the club does not have a trophy, right? It's, it's, it's the, the second year of Charlotte FC. It's the first year for Crown Legacy. And but here we are, Crown Legacy we have a with, with, Wars belt. with a chance. You know, and, it's like, uh, this is it. This is the chance for a trophy. And I think that's really cool in that first season. So, uh, you know, while the first team is playing, it's uh, you have Crown Legacy and um, they're definitely taking a back seat. I don't think there's any argument with that. I think that's the that's the point of it, right? The, from a from a fan point of view, there's there's thirty thousand people at at Bank of America Stadium, and there's a lot less than that out at, at Matthew Sportsplex. And, and that isn't a knock on the club at all. It's just kind of the way that this is set up. But now, in this next month, over the next you know hopefully four weeks or so, if this team has a has a chance to to win a trophy, the first in club history. And maybe capture some imagination. Totally right, right. and 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 you you've played a, a huge part of that. So I th- I, I think uh, you know something else that you said was was so interesting is a bl- it's a blank slate. You're you're launching something from from ground zero from from the grassroots situation. I mean, as your career grows, right? That's pretty pretty cool. That's pretty fucking cool that you can go and say. I help build this crown legacy program, and if they're in year one turns into success, I mean your career can you know, follow that same path. I mean it gives you that ability to put on your resume and, and build your profile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just want before I get into that next, I want to give credit to everyone that comes out to Matthews as well. Yes. Because yeah, it's not three, four thousand people, but the. The few hundred that are out there, like the support has been really, really good for that team. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm a out there. T- I'm a season ticket holder. Yeah. 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 Beating yeah. the drum, the, the whoop whoop when the coach is by, <laughs> the technical staff. Like, it has, and you can tell, like, it means a lot to the players. Like, I don't think, I, I mean, maybe you do know, maybe you don't, but like, it really, it, like, for them uh, in that environment, especially the ones that aren't on first team contracts and haven't experienced that. Um, at our MLS home games to be able to play and feel you know that you feel the buzz you feel the kind of the ups and downs of the crowd and it's really special for younger developing players to experience that and it's part of their development as well so I think everyone is really really appreciative of, of all the people that come out rain and shine to, to come and to come and see them yeah, play. and it's like a subculture within the Charlotte FC culture where the people that are diehard legacy fans that will go out and, and start that whole whoop 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 thing on the, the opposing coaches now they sit and they, they come to they sit together at the first team matches and they do it you know they're yeah, doing the really whoops cool. you know like, okay, <laughs> I can't really hear them cool. as well yeah, yeah. but, but uh, that is a great feature and I love like that legacy has sort of like developed its own traditions that influence the larger Charlotte FC world for sure yeah, yeah. so I, I think that the squad deserves as as this playoff push starts to buy in the first round so Crown Legacy will know who uh, they play next week 
things. Yeah, so, you get to choose. Yeah, you get, yes. you get to next, choose next week. You get to advances. Yeah, depending so on who advances. advances. Yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. right. So uh, I, I think uh, what soccer fans in this city need to do is they need to support the hell out of this squad, support the heck out of these young kids, get out to these playoff matches. And, and let's get three thousand. And get right. yeah, yeah, why not? Why not yeah. go for it here? And um, you know, we're gonna have some fun with that on the show. We're gonna give out some tickets on the show as well, um, and make sure you get all the information that you need uh, to get out to the Plex. We'll let you know when the when the game is because I don't I don't think there is a date yet for the first playoff match. There is October eighth. October eighth official. I heard whispers that October eighth might be the date, but it's he, nice that it's not locked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. D- yeah. Danny always. He, he, you're hearing whispers, <laughs> I'm sure. And, and I tell you what, he Ben is definitely hearing whispers, not just here in Charlotte, from across the globe about a bunch of players. Uh, it's it's been a pleasure to meet you. It's it's been a it's a, been a pleasure to have you. Um, on the show with you wish you nothing but the best of luck um, but final question would be just based on the time of the year it is things are wrapping up right so what's the what's the off season look like for you we, you know the, the, the season ends you, you get into the holiday season and uh, what, what are you doing then this is arguably the one of the most busy times for me and for us as a collective um, this again when a season ends we don't it's important for us to be at first and second team games um, to kind of again see and evaluate a product that we currently have as well but then when the off season hits it's like this is really the chance to travel get out and um, whether it's tournaments where it's specific targets it's it's just the time really where you kind of get on the road and you kind of make it happen essentially leading into the, 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 the coming preseason so yeah it's like the hard work continues um, a little chaotic, a little hectic, but um, yeah, leading up to the draft as well. We come in again in, the, in in December, and then some some international travel and uh, yeah, just seeing what we can put together for for next season. Cool. Are, do you have any scouting trips coordinated to uh, Arsenal Champions League matches or anything like that? Away uh, I might try. I might try and squeeze one in. Yeah, <laughs> for, 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 first time We're back, baby. First time back in the Champions League. <laughs> yeah, as I say, it's been a while. So, first time, so you might as well. First time back in the Champions League. It has been a while. It has been a while. <laughs> So uh, Wednesday nights are back at Emirates, yeah. so yeah. Well, at least we're, we're happy. We're yeah, happy. Yeah, exactly. We're happy. Exactly. Uh, cheers. It's, it's great to meet you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for having me on. Really enjoyed it as well. Cheers.